right, welcome everyone to a new episode of Myth Bust Monday, where every Monday we're gonna take a look at some common fitness or nutrition myth, uh, look at where that myth got started, and then why it's actually wrong based on the most recent scientific evidence. Um, so this week we're gonna be looking at the idea that you shouldn't eat carbs past say 6 or 7 p.m. Uh, because at night you're so much more likely to store those carbs as fat. So before we get into taking this myth down, uh, let's first take a look at where this myth got started. Um, so I think that the myth comes from two main lines of reasoning. Uh, so we're just gonna look at both of them, one at a time, and then bust them uh, in turn. So the first theory goes that your metabolism slows down while you sleep, and so you should limit your carb intake uh, within some proximity to bedtime uh, because you'll just be so much more likely to store it as fat than to burn it as fuel. Um, but before we can tackle this, I think it's first important to clarify what we mean by metabolism in this context. Here, we're basically using it to refer to metabolic rate uh, which determines basically your total daily energy expenditure, or TDEE, um, which is itself a measure of how many calories you burn in the matter of 24 hours. And there are four main components that occupy your total daily energy expenditure. Uh, so the first component is resting metabolic rate, or RMR, which is basically the energy your body needs just to keep its internal functions going. Um, so if you just sat on the couch all day long, uh, you'd still burn this many calories. And it actually occupies roughly half of your total metabolic rate. And then the other half is split between EAT, or Exercise Activity Thermogenesis, uh, so the calories you burn when you exercise, uh, NEAT, or NEAT, which stands for Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis. Um, so these are the calories you'd burn through daily activity, uh, but not exercise. Um, so things like just getting groceries, or fidgeting at your desk. Uh, and then there's a small sliver for the thermic effect of meals. Um, so when you sleep, you won't be exercising, uh, going to get groceries, or eating any food. Um, so those top three components won't apply. Um, so what we're really concerned with when it comes to sleep metabolism is resting metabolic rate, or RMR. And I think that the real question we need to ask is, does RMR during the day differ from RMR at night? Because otherwise sleep, in terms of energy expenditure, wouldn't really be any different from any other time point in the day when you're just resting. And as it turns out, uh, resting energy expenditure during sleep uh, doesn't really differ from resting energy expenditure during the day. And this was shown by Seal and Conway, who found that overnight metabolic rate and basal, or resting metabolic rate, are equivalent. And in fact, research from Zhang and colleagues showed that sleep metabolic rate does tend to be lower than resting metabolic rate for obese subjects, uh, but actually higher than resting metabolic rate in healthy non-obese subjects. Um, so pooled together, they ultimately found that sleep metabolic rate and waking metabolic rate were basically the same, with an average sleep to awake metabolic ratio of 1.0011. Um, so they were almost exactly the same. So taken together, it really seems to be the case that eating carbs at night is really no different than eating carbs, say, at your lunchtime meal, and then just going back to your desk uh, at rest, basically. Um, there's nothing special about eating carbs late at night, simply on the basis of metabolic differences. Um, but for all that, I still think this is somewhat of a misplaced notion to be worrying about daily or, or diurnal fluctuations and metabolic rate. Um, for a couple reasons. Uh, first of all, transient changes in metabolic rate uh, don't ultimately determine the fate of one's body composition, uh, which is instead determined by net caloric deficit uh, across a 24 hour or even longer period of time. Um, so even if metabolic rate was lower uh, in the nighttime or while sleeping, uh, and those nutrients that you ate late at night were being preferentially uh, partitioned towards storage, um, that energy would eventually come out of storage, uh, assuming, again, a net deficit was in place. Um, and it is the net caloric deficit uh, that's driving these changes in body fat, uh, not transient changes in metabolic rate throughout the day. Secondly, dietary carbohydrate is not nearly as readily converted to body fat as a lot of people seem to think. Um, this is referred to as a process known as de novo lipogenesis, and it's actually quite rare in humans under normal eating conditions. Um, and instead, what happens when you eat carbohydrate is your body suppresses its normal rate of fat oxidation. Um, so basically, less fat is burned, uh, which means more fat is going into storage. I should say more dietary fat is going into storage. 
Um, and then that dietary carbohydrate is much more likely shuttled into muscle or liver, liver glycogen um, or burned off as fuel. Um, this is a bit of a pedantic point, uh, but I just bring it up to emphasize the fact that there's nothing unique or special about eating carbs late at night. Um, even if the, the rest of the factors were true, um, there wouldn't be anything special about carbs that makes them inherently more fat generating. Okay, so for a quick summary so far, uh, you shouldn't reduce your carb intake at night uh, because of concerns about decreases in metabolism. Uh, because first of all, uh, metabolism doesn't really seem to be any different during sleep as it is during the day at rest. Uh, secondly, it's 24 hour net caloric balance that determines whether fat is gained or lost. Uh, and thirdly, uh, carbohydrates aren't really that readily stored as fat to begin with. Okay, so another theory for limiting carbs late at night has to do with the fact that insulin sensitivity is lower in the evening. Now, some research from Biston and colleagues does support this. Uh, when they looked at the insulin response to a morning meal eaten at 8.30 in the morning uh, in an evening meal uh, with equal carbs, the insulin response was better to the first meal. Um, however, this is clearly, I think, most likely due to the fact that there was an overnight fast and there's a lot of evidence suggesting that fasting does improve insulin sensitivity, at the very least acutely. And so it would make sense that the insulin response to the morning meal would be better. Um, and then in support of this, the same paper showed that when they compared a mid-afternoon meal, uh, eaten in the absence of a fast, to a nighttime meal, uh, there was no difference in insulin sensitivity. So it isn't so much that insulin sensitivity is really uniquely bad in the evening, um, it's just more so to do with the fact that it peaks uh, early in the morning or before the first meal, and then it'll be decreased for all subsequent meals. I um, mean, kind of like uh, energy expenditure and metabolic rate, I think that concerns to do with insulin sensitivity should be focused on improving it over the long term. Uh, and I think that the best way to do that is through maintaining a healthy, lean body composition uh, through regular exercise and a generally healthy diet. And I don't think you should really be too concerned with timing your carbs around transient fluctuations in insulin sensitivity throughout a 24 hour period. Okay, so with those two uh, basic theories busted, uh, I'd like to look into some of the peer reviewed literature uh, on the topic of nighttime eating. And in 2017, Fong and colleagues conducted a systematic review and meta-analysis wherein they narrowed down 121 studies to five clinical trials that met their inclusion criteria, which included the use of isoenergetic or calorie matched treatment arms and excluded subjects doing shift work or folks with night eating syndrome. And basically they found that four of the five clinical trials did in fact show that a smaller evening meal produced greater weight loss compared to a larger evening meal. Uh, however, when the individual trial results were aggregated, the overall weight loss effects weren't statistically significant. And this led the authors to conclude that given these results, we are not to make sound conclusions about the relationship between the evening meal and its effect on intentional weight loss. And our findings challenge the popular belief that eating a smaller dinner is beneficial for weight management. Um, so coming full circle on this, I think that the idea that you should limit carbs at night for reasons related to uh, metabolism or insulin sensitivity uh, can be completely busted or pretty well busted uh, at this point. Um, and I think that what you should instead focus on is a pattern of eating that works well for you. And by that, I mean your schedule and your preferences. And in my experience, changes in appetite are highly individual. Um, and I know that some people uh, find that they don't have much of an appetite in the morning, uh, but it really ramps up in the evening. And if that applies to you, um, then I see no harm in skewing your, your calorie intake, including your carb intake, uh, to be eaten a little bit later in the day. And this won't hinder your fat loss progress in, in any way. Um, and then on the other hand, uh, I know that it's a fact that a lot of people do struggle with uh, late night eating or late night snacking. Um, and if this happens to apply to you, um, then it might be a good idea from a pragmatic perspective uh, to cut yourself off at a certain time point in the night and uh, just limit any future trips to the cupboard uh, past that point. All right, so guys, that is gonna conclude this week's Myth Bus Monday. Um, I hope that you guys really liked it. Um, if you did learn something or if you found it to be helpful in any way, uh, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought, or at least leave the video a thumbs up. I wanna thank you guys very much for watching. Um, and I will see you guys all here next Monday.